I felt that that can only be achieved and maintained through a good, strong education, through a good, strong educational system. Because without it, one will always be uh, vulnerable. English language teaching. Hello and welcome back to ELT English Language Teaching Under the Covers. Uh, I am Neil Teacher and I am again joined by the ready and the rough. Is that right? Rich. <laughs> the ravishing, normally. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome. Once again, we're here to blow minds and redefine the meaning of teaching. Wow, that's lofty. That's lofty. But it's true. That's what we're going to do because today is the first one of our Teaching Masters series. Uh, this is a Teaching Masters, so it's a, a deep dive, uh, not into methodology, but into a teacher that we both admire, um, that has helped us a lot, not directly, but through his method. That, that <coughs> teacher is Michelle Thomas. And um, you know he's had a lot of influence on my teaching. Um, what would you say, Rich? Um, well, sort of quick summary type thing, I guess. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think approach um, definitely, um, and philosophy, the way that is kind of general thinking about how mm -hmm. teaching should be done. Method, maybe not greatly. Um, but I think it's sort of thinking more laterally than that, not kind of, I don't, I wouldn't say that I directly take elements of his method, but maybe I'll be reminded as we, as we sort of take a look at him, mm -hmm. um, exactly, you know, of elements that maybe I do, uh, I do take from him. He's certainly, you know, a, a fantastic and very interesting teacher with a unique method. And I think also one of the things about Michelle Thomas and his method is that, um, he's not really talked about that much in, in kind of mainstream language teaching. You know, it's mm -hmm. not the kind of thing that's going to show up on a CELTA. Uh, and I think no. you'd struggle to fit it into a, to a diploma even. I mean, it, uh, a bit, bit freer about how you can go about things in that way. But it's mm -hmm. almost like he's, he's a bit out of the mainstream, isn't he? And I think there's yeah. a number of reasons for that, which we can, we can probably get into along the way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. Well, we'll get deeper in this dive. Um, but first off, We've created a lot of intrigue, especially rich with that mystery, uh, without getting too much into depth. So what I figure uh, now would be a good time to actually do a little brief uh, go to the blackboard, the chalkboard, and give you all an introduction to Michelle Thomas. And I'll kind of set up before we start going that a little bit deeper. So let's check out that clip right so now. To the chalkboard. Michel Thomas was a Polish polyglot linguist war hero who survived imprisonment in several different Nazi concentration camps using only his language skills and his wits to help him survive during the war, then later on help hunt Nazis uh, for America, for the US. Uh, he has an absolutely astonishing story and there are plenty of great biographies out there that you can read about him and, and I'll include some links below but I will focus mostly on uh, what he's famous for his language teaching system known as the Michelle Thomas method I came across Michelle Thomas via the Michelle Thomas audio course whilst I was trying to learn Spanish previously had been using a Pilmsner audio course and uh, others like that and other rote learning type methods and they, they work fine um, but it was work and at the time I wasn't very disciplined with poor experiences of language learning at school so I really just was not enjoying the process at all. However I found after listening to the Michelle Thomas Spanish course that I was picking up Spanish more easily and I was enjoying myself while doing so. He focuses on 
taking away that stress and anxiety that often surrounds uh, learning a language and puts a lot of focus on making it clear that a, a student should not try to memorize uh, or to learn, but instead should just relax and allow the teacher to do the teaching. And thus he takes a lot of pressure off the learner. I like how he doesn't really focus on building vocabulary or even grammar rules, but instead focuses on language that's uh, more useful uh, day to day and then building sequentially and logically on those language blocks. According to Jonathan Slotley of the University College London, Thomas held that there are three critical components of the teaching environment. The first is the analysis of the material to be learnt. If the analysis is correct, teaching is easier and the subsequent learning of the pupil is ensured. The second is isolating and structuring the most useful information to teach so that there is a logical progression in the skills, knowledge and concepts taught. Easier skills are taught before more difficult ones. Uh, useful information is taught before less useful information. In this context, useful information is defined as uh, in terms of uh, general use. Will it be used more in general and its wider applicability? The third component of the learning environment is determining the best way of presenting skills, knowledge and concepts to students so that learning is facilitated. This method presents target language by interleaving new uh, with old materials, teaching generalization from language principles, contextual diversity, learning self-correction in an environment that attempts to be stress-free as the teacher is responsible for learning, not the student. Welcome back. Uh, so you've had your little introduction about Michelle Thomas um, and his method and well, can we get a little bit deeper before we start to have a look at some clips of him teaching? Yeah, um, yeah, sure we can. We can talk a little bit. So the, um, I think it's very interesting how he sort of came about and, and did his thing. He's basically someone who, as far as I can tell, he kind of learned a lot of languages himself. Mm -hmm. And then he decided, oh, I can teach this in the way that I learned it. Um, so very unorthodox. And I think that probably rubs um, some of the more mainstream uh, teachers or mainstream academics in language teaching the wrong way because they kind of prefer people to go a bit more through the system, don't they? Yeah, they, um, they want it to. I mean, it's, it's a science thing because they, they want it to be replicatable outside of that person. I think that was one of the biggest judgments uh, against him was that it was him it, the method right. was him and yeah. you know without him it doesn't work and yeah. i can kind of see that point but you know yeah no i think that's really true because you can um get some of their products that are done by like one of his employees or representatives or someone who he trained right mm -hmm. and honestly I, I definitely don't find them as good um if if kind of valuable for me at all really when i when i kind of went over some of his spanish products the ones that he did were absolutely fantastic oh yeah the ones that that were done by kind of one of his employees like the vocabulary expansion series and stuff it was, didn't really grip me so there is definitely an element that um yeah it is it is it is him and maybe this part of that is his charisma his style and his mm -hmm his manner of interacting. So that's a valid criticism. Uh, I, mean, um, I know with, with um, myself as well, you know, we were both doing Michelle Thomas at the same time with the Spanish. Um, and we, we had a lot of humor come about from, you know, the way that he teaches and his charisma. Mm. And because he's, got, he's very heavily accented, which was, was quite mm. um, jarring at first. Well, but, he, has, he, has the, he has that kind of continental european um professor style of speaking doesn't yeah. he you know um so he, he sounds a bit like a caricature yeah but yeah you know, that almost made it more memorable to me but i, I would agree with mm. your point as well because I, I i did michelle thomas um mandarin and it just it didn't sink as much and i'm not sure if that is is down to him or 
is, or it's because it's a more difficult language, because a lot of the languages that he deconstructed and you know, taught are all basically Romance languages right. uh, that he did himself, or something Germanic or European languages, so mm -hmm. they kind of lend themselves anyway. And, you know, he's got a lot of methods of, you know, helping to translate through that. So I think yeah. something outside of that, that he's not done himself, it's, mm -hmm. um, yeah, a little bit more difficult. Was that, was that actually presented by him, that course? The Mandarin one? No, it wasn't. It, it wasn't. Was, See, it, that's the, I think that's a big deal. I think that's a big deal because he hasn't really... He hasn't constructed the, the, the pathway. And his languages, they are very much a pathway. And I think there's something else that I would say about it as well, yeah. certainly about his products. I don't know. Obviously, we can't really speak for how he would have taught because he did teach. He charged a lot for, for classes. And he had, a, he had an institute where he did teach. And he, he presumably took people beyond the basics. But really, the courses that he can buy, they are just basic. They are the basics, right? Mm -hmm. And um, much like a lot of, uh, marketing bump in language learning they make they do make ridiculous claims and I think that this is also where I um, it's kind of reje rejected a little bit by the language learning industry because you know they do have the kind of marketing hype that you can speak conversationally in weeks or days or whatever it is right uh, the truth is you, you can't you can form some basic sentences mm -hmm. you know within a couple of weeks and you can do it pretty well mm -hmm. considering that you have really just spent an hour a day on this for a couple of weeks you know yeah. and i think he has some very memorable ways of teaching some of the more difficult aspects that you know getting things to stick in your head in a way that normally they wouldn't yeah um, I, 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 de really I definitely echo that um i mean at the time i used rosetta stone i used pilms there Bullets, just uh, anything and everything that I could get my hands on. And it was the mm. Michelle Thomas one that was the one that really kind of helped me the most. And he does have a lot of these techniques. And one of the th techniques that I wanted to bring up was how, uh, and a lot of people complain about this, is that he, he used it, he spoke a lot in English ju during the course, but he also introduced the concept of. Um, using English um, and how you know it's not so different to like Spanish or it's not so, using those words you use, use yeah. longer words um, yeah. that you know when he's like saying uh, translation to try that thing yeah. on and you know yeah, yeah. Um, you know I that yeah yeah the, the, it, the it Sean, gave you more Fionn, of a delt uh, yeah yeah you know, you're abs you're absolutely right and actually on that point I think that is one of the things that I that's one of the the points that I would take directly from his method myself which is the 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 overarching uh, idea of not stigmatizing the use of um, L1, we might say, right, mm -hmm. which is your native language, mm -hmm. stigmatizing the use of that in the classroom. And that's one of the things that I personally was quite happy when I did the dip, that my um, my tutor on the diploma was 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 kind of OK with that, because I, I you know, um, I would occasionally use some elements of Spanish. For example, if someone asks, what does this mean? And, you know, you're doing 40 minute uh classes you know that have to be programmed by the minute you don't really want to bounce off and talk about you know expand on some Im random piece of emergent vocabulary mm -hmm. um then you can just fire it back and say oh it's entregar boom done right mm -hmm. uh, that's the teacher as dictionary which is not particularly good thing to do anyway but it's one way of of, of deflection and um yeah pointing out the sim similarities i think Absolutely, especially between Spanish and English. There's loads of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is something also that I've seen recently argued by um, Paul, can't remember his name, uh, one of the writers on a um, very famous uh, series of course books. And uh, he was saying that, um, you know, we're too quick to punish, uh, we're too quick to punish false friends, mm -hmm. but we should in fact be always celebrating the attempt. Because mm -hmm. most friends 
are not false friends, they're good friends. Uh, if for anyone who's, who doesn't know what that means, it's to do with the idea that if you have a word like uh, a, a theon word in Spanish, like función, uh, then in English it'll be function 99% of the time. Mm-hmm. Occasionally you get one that, you know, I think they might have a word like felicitación or something, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and in English, felicitation doesn't really have the same meaning. And that mm-hmm. would be a false friend and Mm -hmm. normally teachers would react in a way like if a student says you know oh and i I wish them felicitation the students the teacher will be like oh no not felicitation no it's like you know i wish them all the best or something right yeah you're kind of punishing them for uh for for doing something which actually is quite a good thing to do and 99 percent of the time will be well and this this fella uh paul can't remember his surname uh we should have him on at some point though if we can get him um (laughs) he he was saying you know no no it should be more like yes nice try you know but not quite but nice try Mm -hmm. you should definitely keep trying that because most of the time that's gonna work right but in this occasion it didn't so yeah definitely i think focusing a bit more not stigmatizing l1 uh, not always saying to students oh you have to think in english whatever that means yeah and i've i've made big deals about that you can see videos uh you should come professor rich got some videos about that <laughs> <laughs> sorry i'm plugging already maybe we should um unless unless you've got anything to add maybe we should actually watch something <laughs> <laughs> no uh I, I totally i totally agree with what you're saying and um you know i think now would be a good time to kind of sort of see this in action so you can kind of see what we're talking about and why we chose Michelle Thomas as our first uh, teaching master Um, because there's he's he's outside of the mainstream and he's outside of the idea of this educational structure that you should have or uh, that's um, you know like that's been constructed about language systems and you know see you know there is value to going outside of the system and um you know how you can take that in so what we've got is we actually got a um a documentary series uh, by the bbc uh, i believe it's called the language master and mm. it follows um michelle thomas uh, as he goes from you know his home that was at the time in uh, the u.s to teaching uh French, I believe it was, in a, just a school, random school in England, and these kids who were doing the 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 language learning, the French language learning per the, the system in the UK, and then he comes in for I think it was like a couple of weeks, and he goes that takes them through his method, and it's following them and him how he does it, and you know the results after. And also there's a bit about his life and, you know, what his peers think about him. It's a great documentary. We're going to look at clips mostly focusing on his teaching. Um, but I would highly recommend that you seek that documentary out anyway, because it's, it's fascinating. Um, yeah. To the Sixth Form Centre to demonstrate for the first time ever the techniques he uses to produce his apparently miraculous results. He promises that with his method of teaching, even the most ordinary student can acquire in just days a depth of knowledge of a language Mm -hmm. that would normally take years to learn. Checking up on what Michelle manages to achieve will be head of French at the school, Margaret Thompson. She's a typical French teacher. I think there are different aptitudes for languages, yes. And I think it requires quite a lot of things like attention to detail, that kids really don't want to be bothered with. Languages, and I'm talking more now about, yeah, languages generally. I have to say, I think this is quite a, um, a dated perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, know, I know what she's getting at, but um, I think that even the modern language industry would say about this, that most likely what she's doing is she's trying to apply adult uh, learning methods to teenagers. And that's probably why she's seeing those, res- why she's making these comments. Mm-hmm. Um, because, uh, yeah, it's true. It's this idea that as people get older, it's better to focus on rules and form because they're able to apply that with the way that their minds are. Mm-hmm. But the, the younger people get, the, the less you want to focus on form and rules and the more you want to focus on just meaning, mm-hmm. uh, which is why these days, especially with young learners, uh, correction is kind of, not you know it's some the 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 emphasis is taken off correction Mm -hmm. uh it's more just about effective communication and building that up Mm -hmm. um 
But yeah, let's see what else she said. Mm -hmm. um, the way they're taught at the moment um, require a lot of hard graft and a lot of attention to detail, a lot of repetition, a lot of things that students find boring. Michelle doesn't believe in the concept of an aptitude for learning Here he is. or being a good student. <laughs> Just it. Only good it's and bad good, teaching. Language beast, not master. Given, who all volunteered for this experiment would by most standards be classed as academically very average. What they've been promised is five solid days with Michelle mm. in the classroom and the most astonishing educational experience of their lives. I'm very pleased to meet you and I'm looking forward to teaching you today, but uh, under better physical conditions, because I don't think that uh, where you're sitting is uh, very comfortable. I would like you to feel comfortable. So we're going to rearrange everything here. <laughs> the makeover show. <laughs> no reading or writing in his lessons. There's no need for desks or a blackboard. For Michelle, no one can really learn unless anything that causes stress is removed from the experience. So I, I think it's worth us kind of dropping in on that because yeah. actually there is there is a link to mainstream methodology with that, um, which is one of the one of the three methods that will the three sixties and seventies methods that we'll cover at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. I believe this one in particular is what is from one called Suggestopedia. Mm -hmm. I might be wrong about that, uh, but the 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 idea of that one was it, it kind of prescribed. Yeah, the, it, the students must be relaxed as possible. That was primary, the absolutely fundamental primary um, thing that needed to be achieved in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And it did talk. It specified that, that in that method, that the strict method, methodology of it, uh, that there would be plants in the room. And I noticed that is something that mm -hmm. Michelle Thomas does. The chairs should be comfy, which also is something he does. Uh, in addition, that method, for some reason, uh, advocates the use of baroque music in the background mm -hmm. um, which I don't think that's something he does but uh, it's quite interesting that they spe specifically want you to play baroque music not just gen any kind of any kind of general relaxing music but yeah so so there's a there's a link here and there's there, there, there's um, there's literature to, to back this up and uh, you so, know what a lot of um, exam prep they do talk about making sure that the environment is the same or similar, uh, an approximation to the exam environment. And I, I know that sounds strange and you're like, well, uh, shouldn't they be stress-free? And what, what, that was one of the ideas with exam prep when you, you kind of try and uh, mod it so it's the same to what they're going to experience in the actual exam is because there's no dissonance you know like if you feel really relaxed um and you're in the classroom and then you go to this exam situation and you know the 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 adjudicator or whoever's giving you the test uh you know is kind of stern and there's so many people around and everyone's got to be quiet then it's a different environment to where you were recalling the language so th this idea yeah. of you should learn either in a stress-free environment or an environment of which you're going to be you know, like needing to use it, uh, I think is is a very interesting concept. Yeah, I'm I, I'm tempted to side on the 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 idea of of, uh, of Michelle Thomas, the the idea of the relaxed environment, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, I have my own ideas about this. Um, that um, you know, the the the, the l learning new things and. Uh, also a focus on accuracy uh, works best in that environment that mm -hmm. low pressure um, relaxed environment the student has a chance to slow down to think about what they're saying to do a bit more self-correction than they normally would mm -hmm. but then when they go into the real world which as you say is going to be is naturally going to be higher stress and potentially a lot higher stress if you're doing mm -hmm. a presentation or whatever um, then the focus goes to fluency um, and it's true that when the focus goes to fluency you're likely to make more mistakes 
to say things more in the wrong way. Natives, what happens with us, we, we tend to say mm and er uh, and all the rest of it. I mean, we, we literally go to Toastmasters and stuff like that where they make you get up and do the toast so you get accustomed to it. So it, it is kind of like a spectrum. Yeah, but I, I, yeah, and I think that is partly, that's kind of a way of taking away the stress of a new environment. Yeah, so, so that's why I'm kind of linking it together, even though it's kind of yeah. weirdly, what, well, isn't that stressful? Well, you're like, no, because you're kind of practicing the stress, in a way. Okay, I see what you're saying with that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, no, I, I think there's definitely merit in that. Yeah, yeah. Like, because that would, that would just be like... The, the ELT equivalent would be, you know, prepping and doing a presentation in class. Yeah. Uh, maybe group-based or, or whatever, right? So, yeah, it's totally. Uh, but I think synthetically putting, like, for example, having a student and then being like, come on, what's your answer? Come on, go! <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure if that's quite right. Uh, there's something else also that, that I like to talk about and that I learned both in languages and in, t in, in uh, playing instruments, because I think they are quite similar, mm -hmm. is um, if you do things... A uh, hundred times slowly and correctly, then the hundred and first time you can do it a bit faster. Mm -hmm. But if you do things a thousand times wrong and fast, then you'll never do it correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. And you know, I think a lot of uh, you know maybe what another teaching master we can look at later on is someone that teaches music because I consider mm. and many people consider uh, music to be a language. Right. I think there's a lot of similarities in the skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's communication, in a, in a way. But um, you know, that's for another day. Uh, should okay. we finish off the clip and yep. kind of see that's how good. this gets set up? Okay. It's the driving force that informs every aspect of his teaching. Before, before starting. I'm going to set up a very important rule, a very important ground rule. And that rule is for you never to worry about remembering. Never to worry about remembering anything and therefore not to try. Never to try to remember anything from one moment to the next. This is a method with responsibility for your remembering and for learning is no teaching. So if at any point there's something you don't remember, this is not your problem. It will be up to me to know why you don't remember individually and what to do about it. That's All these students are doing vocational qualification. Uh, so I think that's the end of our first section. Yeah. Um, um, I'd, I'd like to again emphasize with his uh, with his method it, that was on the, the start of his course for Spanish It's on the start of basically every one of the courses and it took me a long time to uh, accept that because I, I, I tried everything else was memorized memorized really try and remember mm -hmm. but you know yeah. once I found that I was like well okay I've got this audio course I'll plug it in, l listen to it, I'll interact with it, and then I'll just leave it, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to try and remember it, <clears throat> and it took a time for me to just kind of do, because I was doing the same lesson again and again and again, um, mm. and then it just, it seeped in, and mm. I was remembering it a lot clearer than, you know, the methods where I was actively trying. It was, mm. It's very strange. I don't know if you had that yeah. similar experience. Um, I think it's, it's, this is a combination, I think, but, uh, this is also, to some extent, this also does have some good academic background and it is something fundamental to, to his method, this idea of, um, not, ha not trying to remember. And for me, this really relates to the idea that, um, you know, if you're having to cram something, you can cram, you can cram, uh, and you'll remember something in the short term definitely um, but as time goes on there is some chance that you will remember it as well um, normally almost by accident um, but not necessarily because of your cramming and that, for me that's what he's talking about when he's talking about trying to remember he's, he's talking about people just trying to remember a piece of vocabulary for the sake of that vocabulary which I think that's the, the thing that's missing there is that 
Um, there's other elements of why you remember things. Uh, like you might see a word and it looks kind of similar to a word in English and then you always remember it because you're like, oh yeah, in Spanish, that word means that. But in English, it means that, you know. That's because you had that emotional reaction, um, which makes it easy to remember. And that's one of the things I think he plays on a lot, that he creates emotional reactions in people, mm -hmm. which helps them to remember stuff. And we'll probably see some of that here. Um, you know, the, the thing where he talks about jumping off the diving board in Spanish for the... Um, <laughs> The, pre the present perfect sense, right? And it kind of slots it into your head. You kind of imagine a diving board and blah, blah, blah. And that's, you know, visualization, personalization, some of the concepts that we've talked about before about uh, which can aid vocabulary recall. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I absolutely, uh, I absolutely understand where he's coming from with that. Perfect. There is something else I want to say from sure. that clip as well, but I just wanted to... Do you have anything else you want to say specifically no. about the vocabulary? Okay. So um, the other thing is, uh, and it reminded me then when he talked about it, he, he talked about it being his problem if they don't remember, and he's the teacher and he takes responsibility. Now, I think that is quite um, groundbreaking, and, and I think that is something that today... Um, we do we do think you know the, the the language teaching industry has that idea as well i think um there is there is, there is certainly an idea of good bad, good and bad students and a good student uh, will do a lot better than a bad student even with a bad teacher or with a good teacher it doesn't matter um but there is also the idea that uh, these days if the if the class isn't getting it then you're doing something wrong mm -hmm. um you know or the or the, or you're being forced to teach material that's bad uh, right. So there is that acceptance now that that, um, you know, it's not just about the students jumping through hoops. It's also about what the teacher's doing. And he really he goes to the paradigm of that, doesn't he, where he says, you know, it's not your problem at all. Right. Mm -hmm. It's my problem. Um, it's almost I, like a, he, he comes across as a, a parental figure, uh, mm. as, as someone that you can. Uh, immediately establishes trust um, and yeah. confidence in because you're like, oh, okay, okay, I don't have to worry about this. It's it's all on all on yeah. this guy, and he's going to guide me through. He's going to hold my hand, and you know, I, yeah. a lot of people need that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I I do see you know some merit in that, and I don't really know about how your teaching methods gone i mean with with 60 you know chinese kids in a classroom it's probably be a little bit difficult to take responsibility for how every single one of them are doing but oh, with it with the private classes that i'm currently doing i try to do it as much as i possibly can um that i i if if i start to see that something's not working um then i'm i'm not going to be so quick as to turn around and say to my student oh you need to do this more and you need to do that um i'll give, I'll give kind of a, a specific example of that is one of the things i place a lot of emphasis on is um like vocabulary note taking and how to take good vocabulary notes that actually sink into your head mm. kind of linking back to what he's saying about memorizing i teach students techniques to uh, make it so those things do stick in their head mm. and i try to teach them to take pride in their vocabulary book and have a no nice one and stuff like that but, you know it doesn't work for everyone Mm -hmm. And um, when I find that it's not working for someone, mm -hmm. I'll, try to, I'll try to get it to work for them. Not just a case of, oh, you haven't done your vocabulary notes this week. Mm, you know, get doing some more. That's, that's not really going to work, is it? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll try and t twist it a little bit, maybe adapt it, make it easier for them, change it to a digital version, do something with it. But then if it completely doesn't work, then uh, at some point I'll leave it and we'll go with something else. And, um, and I think that is the right attitude to have. You can't be dogmatic and prescriptive about the way you do things. And mm -hmm. if you find yourself blaming the student for something, well, that's not going to get you anywhere. Even, even, if, even if the student is partly to blame because, I don't know, they're just not that interested or they're lazy or it has to be an obligation. Mm -hmm. I think the, you know, it's a good attitude, a good approach for the teacher to take as much responsibility as they can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, something that you know I, I bring up as well in in that I do not not so much uh, in China, but when I was teaching in Canada, and you know I'm teaching uh, people that are coming in to Canada 
uh, from abroad that are going to you know carry on to go to university or carry on to live in in Canada. Mm. Um, one of the things, I mean, it's two parts. One is I would always try to use a variety of analogies that are like, oh right, so what we're doing, we're trying to make a cake, you know, we're, we're, or we're building a house, or you know, so it's clear that we're we're making, we're going from nothing and we're kind of building on top of that. Um, but one of the, the other things um, that uh, I like to do, and I think it's kind of similar to uh, Michelle, is all the students that I get through to Canada have already got some level of English. They have learnt it within their own country's systems, and then they come here, and when they come into class, they're always... I don't, I don't, I can't speak English, even though they, and you might actually say, I can't speak English. I'm like, no, you, you can. And, um, you know, I always encourage them to go to groups and just talk with as many people. And, um, you know, after a month, they'll improve and we'll have another conversation where it, it goes along the lines of, oh, you've improved a lot. And they might say, oh, thank you, teacher. I'm like, do you really think I can teach you in a month what you, uh, the, the fluency that you have now or the English that you have now? And, you know, more often they will say no. And I'm like, well, really the difference is between, you know, this one month is you've just let a lot of the stress go. You've, you've gained a lot more confidence. You've not really mm -hmm. gained so much English. So it, it's almost, I'm trying to, establish in their heads that you know it's more up here uh, and emotionally wise but it's restricting them than the actual language you know that they've they've learnt and you know I kind of got that tact from Michelle Thomas yeah I think I think there's an element of that it's very it's very difficult to quantify isn't it because language is such a complex skill <clears throat> and with any skill along the path to mastery Mm -hmm. um, you, you it, it goes up and down on a daily basis, which is why people will say something like, oh, today my English doesn't seem to be so good, or, oh, mm -hmm. I really feel like my English is quite good today, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, you can, and you can see that happen. It's because it really does mm -hmm. go up and down, and probably a lot of it is related to emotional state, like you're yeah. saying, how relaxed they feel, how bad their day's been, how exhausted they are from that day, what mm -hmm. they had for breakfast, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it can be anything, can't it? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. But once I you kind of get more relaxed about it and relaxed, well, okay, yeah, sometimes it's going to be good, sometimes it's going to be bad. But, you know, it mm. then starts to allow that the actual learning you're acquiring faster. Yeah, I think this is where the factuous idea of um, alcohol consumption it, it helping your learning comes from. It's because alcohol just makes people relax. Yeah. And when they relax, they, they tend to seem a bit more fluent. Whether that actually helps over the long term or not, I think, you know... Is, is questionable uh, it's probably helps it probably helps your alcohol probably helps your language as much as it helps your dancing so i don't really know that's a quote that's that. a quote that's <laughs> got that's got to go on a t-shirt or an instagram post <laughs> okay um uh should we move on to the next clip applications because they don't like exams paula has studied some italian before but is completely new to french Darmanda failed his Spanish GCSE. He has never studied French before today. Abdul tried German, but failed his GCSE late last year. And Anthony tried French for just a few years before giving up. Maria and Satvinder have both tried and failed their French GCSEs. And Emily was told by her French teacher at school to give up because she had no talent for languages whatsoever. Oh, well, awful. there's a tip for a teacher, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I can't Tell imagine what, any that, teacher doing that. Definitely in my teaching toolbox. <laughs> when a student comes along you don't like, just tell them to give just... up and that they have no talent for whatever you're teaching. Honestly. <laughs> there we go. I'll make, I'm going to make that my uh, the slogan of Professor Rich. <laughs> if you perform badly... Give up, you have no talent. Otherwise, <laughs> take lessons with Professor Rich. <laughs> oh okay. my god. Yeah, terrible. Words in English ending in ideally, like possible. And in ideally, 
like a table. They all come from French, and they're the same. They have the same spelling, the same meaning. That's amazing that you actually, I forgot that he actually starts with that. Uh, yeah, because it's, it's, it is really powerful, isn't it? Because someone who doesn't know any French, and you just say, oh, these words that with the evil and able all come from French. So you actually know the same. already yeah. hundreds of words, and you're like, yeah. oh shit, I know yeah. French. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah. And it's not true that they're all the same, obviously, because we talked about this before with the false friends, but yeah, obviously, le da, and you need to know the pronunciation as well, right? Table rather than table or whatever. But, uh, but that, that's yeah. basically it. I, I, I had a friend that, was, that said that basically you could speak any other European languages if you just put on the accent <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Michelle Thomas takes it to the next level I'm joking. You, can, you can come across like it it's kind of funny actually because I, I do think uh, first of all if you, the more languages that you learn the better you become at doing accents and stuff I don't know if you've noticed that but um, if you can throw out a phrase in a language and make it sound good people think you can speak it amazing even though you literally just know that phrase yeah. like I've, I, I, I've, I've done this before where I've just randomly said a silly phrase like uh, was ist mit den Katzen bitte and like people are like whoa you can speak German and I'm like not really I just said what's wrong with those cats <laughs> that's the only thing that I know how to say. <laughs> so, and we're going to do another video on the back down the backstory of how <laughs> Rich learned that phrase <laughs> and why he says it so passionately. <laughs> <laughs> Le restaurant. Yeah. Uh, what's the no? What do I know? In, is, I do know. I have a French one as well. Um, je suis allergique à pois, bête et pois et les lentilles. There you go. Um, that can falsely make people think that I know some basic French, but I don't. I just know how to say that I'm allergic to certain foods. <laughs> definite, a definite um, phrase that you need to learn and learn correctly. Oh, it's important in the yeah. restaurants. Yeah. Except for the pronunciation. The ah. pronunciation. Mm. Ideally, in French, it's pronounced Like possible, but we perceive. And ably. Because the letter A is pronounced A, A B L is pronounced A. A table would be table. Table. Oh, that's Italian. Table. Acceptable would be. Acceptable. Yes. Table. Acceptable. Yes. 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 And comfortable would be comfort. Table. Comfort. Table. Right, say it again. Comfort, comfortable, comfortable. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard the expression, uh, c'est la vie? No? Mm -hmm. C'est means it is. It is spelled C apostrophe E S T. C'est means it is. How do you spell C? C apostrophe, c apostrophe. E S T. C apostrophe E S T. What's wrong? C apostrophe E S T. Right. What was table? Table. Comfortable? Comfortable. Comfortable. It is comfortable? Yes, C. C? C comfortable. Say it again. It is? Yes, C. No. Once more, it is? C comfortable. So once more, it is? C comfortable. C comfortable, yes. Uh, this is, that was actually a, perfectly the end of the second clip, but there was a few things I wanted to say anyway. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> I think it's wonderful that, um, and, and you sort of feel it, don't you, that within five or ten minutes, um, not only has he, is, he, is he making them realize that they know a lot more than they think they know, mm -hmm. but also they've, he's already got them piecing things together. You know, he's already got them saying, right, well, you know, c'est la vie, you know, mm -hmm. everyone knows that, no? Well, that's, you know, it's, that's life. That's life, right? So yeah. why do you say that's table, you know? Um, or that's, sorry, what did he do? That's comfortable, right? Yeah, he's using um, adjectives with it. So, you know. And, and that's, then that's an element of personalization. It's possible. And, it's, and then people, they'll, they'll start going, ah, acceptable. Oh, I can say this now in French. Oh, my gosh. C'est acceptable. Mm. Yeah, right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. 
No, absolutely. And, and then that, people that. are just like mining their minds, and you know they'll probably put up their hand and be like, "Oh, any, anyone else can think of any other B O E words?" Well, and, and... I mean, they are, they are doing what you know they're doing one of the big skills of languages, which is piecing together from bricks. You know, making making small little structures, even though it's you know it's not much. It's kind of like um, you know if you if you were teaching someone. Uh, Guitar. I was actually going to grab the damn thing then, but it. Uh, yeah, I will actually. Just one sec. <laughs> sure. Yeah, he, he he has this idea of language blocks. Um, so it's it's kind of like if you taught someone two notes on a guitar, right? And then you kind of said to someone, "Oh well, if you know, and then you know, how would you do?" And he asked them something, and they go, "Oh," or. Or whatever, right? You know, yeah. and it's just teaching them that, um, which it then becomes. It's then you've invested part of your own creativity into the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can you can see them growing with confidence because that that and they're cracking. That they they've obviously a lot of these ones don't come from great backgrounds, student uh, student wise, and their experiences. Obviously, there's a little bit of trauma because you know they're very. There's a lot of trepidation. In them answering him, but uh, I think there is, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> but when they do, you can you can start to see the confidence grow because it's like, oh, actually, I'm doing this, and I'm not just remembering it; I'm saying it, you know, uh, and I'm mm. even producing stuff that he's not asking. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's uh, it's good, and I do the charisma aspect is obviously something there. I mean, they take a liking to him quite quickly, I think. Oh, um, I mean, he the this guy has just got mountains of charisma. He's mesmerizing to watch, you know, and yeah. he's there's no ums and ahs with him uh, with uh, as a teacher. It's there's pauses. And they're not uncomfortable pauses. They're, they're, mm. There's levity. There's there's gravity. Yeah, levity. Within, that's a nice word. With yeah. within them, and you're just you're just <coughs> waiting for the next word to come out. And you'd, I'm not sure if it's because he's thinking of what to say next, uh, or if he's just taking a pause, or whatever. You know, he's just masterful yeah. with his use of language. Anyway. Yeah. For me, for me, I it almost seems like an element of his relaxation thing. It's like he himself is taking his time. You know, just being very kind of um, measured and considered in what he's saying mm -hmm. next. Um, I was just thinking about that as well. I was wondering, um, uh, did, did, did you mention in, the, in, 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 the, in his, his intro about um, his, um, you know, Le Resistance uh, work? And all yeah, that? I, I mentioned yeah, his okay. background, you know, a lot <laughs> how he went and moved through all these concentration camps, you know. Mm. Uh, he was using language to get out and to get through it and to deceive yes. people and then he yeah. again uses that to then go hunt the nazis and yeah. you know <laughs> i really i think his let if they're stressed at learning a language his level of yeah. stress is just pff, beyond any yeah. compare i think that is something to do with it though i think that like uh, underneath it underneath this you know, relaxing air he's also a hard man who's been through a lot you know yeah. and i think there's something there you know with that it's kind of like at the end of the day if you've been through all that and took it all on then you know you don't <clears throat> you know it's 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 that it's that uh inner discipline <clears throat> mm -hmm. that um actually negates the need for discipline mm -hmm. uh or for, for for too much classroom management right because um he has this calm, this certain kind of demeanor, but, you know, he knows that these kids can, you know, he has 100% control of that classroom and he always is going to. And, well, and I think, well, he has 100% belief in that they can speak French and mm. he will <clears throat> be able to guide them to, to do that. And, yeah. you know, it, you can feel that that comes from years mm. of getting people to do that is just no question no wavering that this is not yep. going to and you know if people stumble you know it picks them up and yep. just keeps moving on the way because you can do it i think this this syllabus the, his syllabus is really a, a strength you know just i've i always i never really have a big 
I, I don't really like the approach that a lot of course books take in the way that they present things. You know, it's kind of, it's almost just doesn't really make that sense. Whereas his syllabus is all based around the students just being able to express the next thing. It's like you can make those sentences a bit longer, mm. you know, and I really like the idea of, uh, you know, the way, the way that he teaches that. Because I think, if I remember rightly, I don't know if we'll see it in this, mm -hmm. but he, he jumps into some verbs pretty quickly and he jumps into the ones which mean lots of people like want and like, you mm -hmm. know, those kind of verbs that, you know, in a lot of course books, you know, sometimes you don't learn for a while. You're still busy doing the alphabet or nationalities or whatever that nobody mm -hmm. really cares about, although mm -hmm. they are kind of important. And mm -hmm. you might be able to do some interesting things with pronunciation. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, maybe, you know, learning um, <clears throat> 10 different nationalities isn't the best way that you could spend your time in the first lesson of the class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. <clears throat> okay, so let's move on to clip number three. Everything into small parts and reassemble it in such a way that one will understand everything step by step. That understanding to learn and to know how to apply it in a practical way in putting it into, into sentences and more and more complex sentences and expressing one's own thoughts and not in memorized phrases. That is important. Will you speak French with me? Voulez-vous Voulez-vous Right. <laughs> Voulez-vous No. Vous like in voodoo. It's vous. Voodoo. Vous. Okay, okay. Voulez-vous Right. Speak French. Parlez français. With me. Pour moi. Not for oh, me. I'm sorry. Avec moi. Avec moi. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, how would you say, will you go eat with me? Voulez-vous Will he, once more? Will he vous right, go, aller, eat, manger, with me, avec moi. Right. Mm -hmm. Learning has to be knowledge. And learning has to be based on understanding. And what you understand, you can absorb, internalize, and it becomes knowledge. What you know, you don't forget. You can block something what you know, but not forget. Words in English ending in ENT and ANT come from French, and they're the same. ENT and ANT is pronounced ANG at the end. Like restaurant would be restaurant. We do not sound the T. So again, what is, uh, what is restaurant? Is it restaurant? Hmm? <coughs> restaurant. You always stress the ending softly. French ears are tuned into endings. So how would you say restaurant? Restaurant. Well, I, I only... Uh, How do you pronounce it? Could you tell me? Something? That's what I want you to do. <laughs> the stress should be on the ending, not on the uh, restaurant. Restaurant. Right. Yes. So Restaurum. always hit the ending, yes? Restaurant. Restaurant. Notice, he, he did not model the language. He <coughs> got them to s pronounce it correctly yeah. without any model. Yeah, yeah. Well, without without prompting, I guess would be the right way because there was yeah. there was there was kind of a model. Uh, I mean, at the start he said it, uh, but yeah, then yeah, he didn't he didn't model again to correct yeah. specifically the mistake that she hadn't picked up from his original model. Instead, he just had her do it. So that is because the, that, the again, reason is, it, is he if he does that, she's trying to memorize and replicate what he's saying. Well, the, the focus is not on him teaching what restaurant is, it's teaching of the stress. So, yeah, that's um, right. <clears throat> I just wanted to yeah. point that out because it's, it's fantastic. No, that's, it. <laughs> that's absolutely right, yeah. He's a um, language Yoda. <laughs> that is, uh, yeah, he, well, I, it's funny, he is a bit like Yoda. Um, but um, you must learn what you know, um, or whatever. Uh, so that is something as well that that is talked about in modern language teaching uh, the idea of a student centered centered model and the idea of getting it out of the students and in fact i think when we look at the silent way i think it's a big thing in that isn't it mm -hmm. uh, one of the methods that you want to look at soon right um so and and i think that has kind of come through into modern language teaching so it's a again that's a valid technique a good technique a well-documented technique and he 
he likes to do it, doesn't he? Because okay. um, she was getting frustrated. She was like, just tell me, just tell me what to say. And he's like, he's no, like, no, <laughs> no. No, I'm not going to tell you what to say. You're going to tell me what to say. Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> <laughs> Judo flip. <laughs> yeah. So um, our, our, our clip was supposed to go on just 10 seconds more. I don't know if there's any Yeah, no. Let, let's let's, let's just let's... see if we got any more tidbits just at the end. Yeah. A little better. Make it better. <laughs> yes. Restaurant. Restaurant. Mm -hmm. Restaurant. Margaret. A little yeah. better. No. Just, just, just make it better. Just I, I think it. that's one technique that I don't use at the moment, but I think I will, I will put that into my teaching from now on. I'm going to use it in every class with every exercise. That's pretty good. Just, just make it better. <laughs> <clears throat> I, I love it. I love it. Um, and, you know, he doesn't get, um, I guess, just to add a little something, just to say we watched that for a reason, is that he, he did it again. He, he wanted them to just reaffirm it, practice it again and repeat. Well, not just that. She did do it better. Um, I think what he was saying in that case was, yeah, but, you know, a bit more stress on the end, a bit less stress on the beginning. And he got her to do it again because for that reason, I think. Um, and that also... It's an awful lot of stress in a stress-free some... environment. <laughs> Ah, Sorry, I well, can't help myself. I couldn't help myself. I couldn't help <laughs> oh, myself. yeah, the word stress, yeah. Uh, yeah, and he has that charismatic smile when he says it. Um, but um, this also has, uh, has become popular. Uh, probably about 10 or 15 years ago, it got big. Uh, Jim Scrivener and uh, I think it was Harmer or someone else was, was going on about it. And they made it big. They call it Demand High. And that's basically exactly what Michelle Thomas just did there, which is that you push the students to, the, to, to do the next bit. Um, so one example that, that's probably a bit more, um, bit more kind of well-practiced in modern language classrooms would be that, you know, uh, a student, you get, you're getting someone, I don't know, to produce sentences or whatever using adverbs, and one of the adverbs is, uh, unfortunately, you know, and a student says, oh, you know, un unfortunately... You know, the, the man got home, but unfortunately, um, you know, he, he'd burnt his dinner or something. And then Demand High might say, OK, can you add more, add more adverbs, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, unfortunately, he got home and his, um, his dinner was burned, but, um, but fortunately, he had a spare, you know, microwave meal in the, in the cupboard or whatever, right? And demand high is that it's like getting students to pushing students to the next level of what mm -hmm. they're able to do and on the spot in the way he does as well mm -hmm. normally. Um, so when you, it's when you get an answer, you say, oh, "Do it again, oh, do yeah. it again." Okay. Do it reminds me more. of um, there's this one clip in in Breaking Bad. Uh, Jesse, the the understudy to uh, Heisenberg, he's it's a flashback to him taking a, a course like a woodcrafting course or at high school and he, he's, he's, he's making a box. I don't know if you've ever seen this uh, episode, mm -hmm. but he's making a box and he goes to his teacher and uh, he's, he shows him his box and you know, <coughs> the teacher's like, oh, is that, is that the best that you can do? And he's like, mm, and then kind of walks, walks back and does a little bit more and he thinks he's done mm -hmm. a pretty good one then. And then he takes it back to the teacher and he's like, here it is, here's my box. And the teacher's like, mm, is that the best that you can do? And then he keeps he keeps going back and refining it and perfecting it. And the the, the only question that he's asking is, is that the best that you can do? Oh. Um, and you know, he finally gets to the point where he's satisfied. He's like, this is as much as I can do. Um, and I I liked that, and it that's it reminded me of what when you were when you were talking just then. Of Absolutely, just like, that's it. Can you can you make it better? And not in a yeah. critical way, but in yeah. a. Whoo, what more can you do? You know, just yeah. in a, well, well, how, what about pushing yourself a little bit? Uh, I mean, at the end, he, have, he obviously, he sold that box to get more crack, but, <laughs> and that just destroyed his soul <laughs> and his complete confidence in himself. But, you know, that's, that's, <laughs> that's beside the point. <laughs> Oh, well, what are we talking about right now? Maybe Don't it is do the crack. <laughs> YouTube.com, YouTube Professor Rich. I have a special course for people who uh, want to use English to get more drugs. <laughs> it's called the, the, the crack course. Crack course in English. 
Not really. It's a joke. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, but that's it, man. That's totally it, isn't it? It's just like, mm. yeah, just try. And, you know, it is a, it is a good technique. Um, people do it with process writing. Mm -hmm. First draft. Okay. You know, it's often done with peers as well, isn't it? It's often done with peer correction. So yeah. you do a draft of a writing, swap it with a partner, go through it, make comments, and then you take it and rewrite it, take it into account the comments from your partner. Um, so, and therefore you're improving it with the aid of another student. This is just doing that autonomously, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you so could, could be a bit more directed. You'd be like, rather than just the, can you make it better or, you know, whatever like that, just, is there something that you can add? What can you add to this? What can you add to mm. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of the whole, uh, my approach with uh, adjectives and adverbs is like, well, how can we kind of jazz up this noun a little bit? How can we make mm. this noun? How can we make it so we picture this noun more? Can we throw a bit mm. of color in there? Can we throw a size? Can we throw a, a feeling? Look, know? it can also be very helpful with those students who get kind of stuck with those lower level grammar forms and lower level vocabulary you know it's like they play it safe all the time mm -hmm. you know uh there was a big ball you know i kicked the big ball you know could mm -hmm. you say anything else there maybe it was a massive sphere i don't know whatever <laughs> but you get you get the idea of cocaine um, <laughs> sure. uh yeah just just the idea of uh i mean at some point it is something that needs to be done isn't it uh, the, the, the introduction of more complex and sophisticated synonyms of uh, more general v words to make I actually think it is not specific. just restricted to um, English language learners, but also people in general, you know, they, they, they often speak quite blandly, you know, when they're describing things that they supposedly love and enjoy, and, you know, there's no mm. description, there's no um, feeling, and it's just because you know, they're not kind of pushing themselves mm. you know, to add uh, a little color to what mm -hmm. they're saying. But, you know, that's a different topic. Um, maybe we should move on to the next clip. S'il vous plaît. So once more, not so fast, please, would be? Pa. So fast. Si vite. 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 Si Oh, that you just said you, you speak too much. Ah. <laughs> no, too fast. Who? Who? Speak. Parle. Too fast. Who parle? Throw, 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 bite. Throw, bite. No, beat, 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 beat. Throw, beat. Throw, beat. Pour moi. Right, who parle? Throw, beat. Pour moi. Mm -hmm. Will you or do you want? Voulez vous? How do you spell voulez-vous? V O U L. Anything? E. A. A Z. Well, it, it, it goes here with. E Z. Right, very good. How would you say you want? Vous voulez. Thank you. Vous voulez. To begin, to start, or to commence is. Come on, say. Ending? We uh are. -huh. You start, you are starting. Come on, say. Ending? Is it? Mm -hmm. Do you start or are you starting? Question mark. Come on, say, who? Come on, say, who? Ending? Z. What's more? Z. Come on, say, who? The command, the command, say. And ending in command, say. Is it? Is it? Hyphen. VOUS. It's been nine solid hours of lessons with just one short break for lunch. They can expect exactly the same over the next four days. Do you think he's a good teacher? Yeah. Oh, amazing. I think he's great. Yeah, no books, no notes, it's different. nothing. It's different than it the English different teachers any other in this country, definitely. And it's a bit of an dictionary, actually. <laughs> it is, it is, because it's like, um, 
Oh, something like, um, he explained something like, what was it? A verb. A yeah. verb, okay. At school, we were taught a verb was a doing word, right? To him, it's not a doing word. <laughs> it's the word of the two. You know, it was, yeah, it's two, it's two. To have, you know, then you know that it's a verb after two, after the word two. So. You have to work to and yeah. to leave to mm -hmm. work. I just kept on like thinking of words which I wasn't meant to, so I thought of, nah, I better not think of it in case when it comes to Monday he's gonna know. Because he seems to can read people's minds. It's telepathic. Somewhere he can read everyone's <laughs> mind. He can read everyone's mind. And then he starts saying things like, um, don't pick words from the way, you know, from from whatever, from the wave and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just tell yourself, no, he knows what I'm gonna say next, you know. <laughs> like when he talks to you and asks you a question, it's like he's looking into you and I don't know, he knows what you're thinking inside. It's, you know. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, these students obviously hold him in very high regard uh, mm -hmm. and it's almost to the point where they see him as a, a, like magic as a magician yeah it's reader. true it's true uh, they do seem to don't they it's interesting how they think he knows what they're thinking um, but I think mm. it, it, it's probably because he's taught this way or we, we mm. learn it's a logical progression so you know mm. you, you kind of I mean, if you are familiar with a, a nat someone's native language and you're, they're learning English, you kind of can predict what they're going to do wrong. True. Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can sort of you can sort of see from this that um, you know, don't be too judgmental about it, but 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 you can tell you know the, these these kids are just average kids. They're not they're they're not super intelligent kids. From what you can tell from the way they're speaking right they're just just everyday kids i think it right? might be just be so, best to frame it as uh they maybe don't see themselves as academic yeah okay yeah, yeah. and then maybe they haven't had a lot of academic experience or whatever mm -hmm. um but yeah uh, you know they're they're obviously very impressed by this and, and they're getting really into it and you can tell they're they're enjoying themselves right yeah uh, they, they look happy about this right um so which of course you would be if you suddenly, in two days, you feel like you've learned more French than what you learned in like four years or whatever. You know? Yeah, I mean, if you kind of think about all the stuff they've learned over nine hours and that they feel confident that they can put together sentences in, in French, you know, I don't think many people that would have done language courses when I was growing up, you know, would feel confident that they could put together a sentence uh, after, you know, like nine hours of classes, you know, yeah. in just the standard education system. You know, even yeah. now, after what I did, how, long, how many years did I do French? I can't think of, I can yeah. think of nouns and probably three sentences, but that's over two yeah. years, you know, yeah. I should be at least at this level that they, they're getting to. Mm -hmm. And was that down to me? Was it down to, you know, the teacher or the system? Probably a combination uh, of all mm. of that. But still. All I remember from like, language classes was like colouring stuff in, listening to CDs and like completing like those exercises where you just like write something and i remember all the course books were in english as well mm -hmm. it was just literally like we had to like fill in the words or something mm -hmm. that we heard on the tape or whatever i remember everyone having terrible pronunciation we were never really taught you know the proper i don't i don't remember being taught how to properly say the words i just remember you know I remember saying stuff like J Mapel, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and the teacher, you know, not really knowing what to do about that. They just accept, they just thought, oh, yeah, whatever, you know. Uh, I'm not really sure that they cared that much. They just, I don't think they had the knowledge of how to, any, any good teaching methodology anyway. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Know. But, you know, so this is also kind of, uh, I feel, a documentary about looking at teaching back in, you know the 70s or well it's not the 70s 80s 90s when this was about right. and you know mm. it'd be interesting yep. to get something from recent times to kind of compare mm. but uh, you know we'll make another video about that we've got so many videos coming out just <laughs> beware <laughs> beware you never know where they're gonna drop right pouvez vous me dire où c'est because i cannot find it um pasque i cannot Poupa. 
Was for? Je, je ne peux pas. Mm -hmm. Find it. Um, to find this. Tro, trove. So I cannot find it. Trove, c'est. Um, trove, le trove. What? An example he is prepared to share is the way he teaches pronouns, words that replace things with a name, words like it, him, and me. Super important. Knowing them is fundamental to using a language properly, and being able to put them in the right part of a sentence usually means a student has done a great deal of hard work. It is something Michelle tackles after a few days. Right. To do in French is fair. Yes. To remember fair, I will say, well, it's a fair thing to do, yes. It's very fair. To do it to make, it's very fair. Come. Venir. See it. La voir. With me. Avec moi. To do it, the fair, yes. I don't see anything, but uh, uh, that le means it, that, uh, in the, that the pronoun comes before the infinitive, yes, nothing. I just say fair to do, le fair to do it. That's, uh, that's all. Then immediately I will go into it and say, well, so how would you say, I would like to do it. You know, je voudrais, I would like. I would like to do it, je voudrais le faire. I would like to know at what time you're going to be here, because uh, I want to see you. Now, le faire is already something which is very natural, very uh, common to them, yes? So there was, they must know now the difference between to do fair and to do it le fair. Now I start replacing the verb. To see? Voir. To voir. see. Right. Okay. So if, if to see is voir, and say, well, how would you say now? I would, uh, to see it. Some students will then, uh, most of them will immediately say le voir, yes? Yes. And some, uh, some may not say immediately le voir, then I will go back to what is to do, faire. And to do it, they will say le faire. Okay, now I'll go to le voir, to see, to see it, ah, le voir. Yes. They all get it. Le voir. So once more, I would like, once more, I would like to see it. Je voudrais le voir. Right, je voudrais le voir. It. Je voudrais le voir. Right, je voudrais le voir. Le voir also, also means to see him. So I'm going to see him tonight. How would you say it? They will say, je vais, I'm going, to see him, le voir ce soir. So now they know voir is to see, le voir is to see it or to see him. And la is her. Now I will say, how would you say, I would like to see her. Automatically they will say, je voudrais la voir, to see you. Vous. See. Vous. Le voir. Okay, what is she saying? Vous voir. Right. <laughs> so again, in, I would like to see you once more. Je voudrais vous voir. Right, je voudrais vous voir. Now they can say, I would like to see you. Je voudrais vous voir. It will never occur to them to say, I would like to see, je voudrais voir, you, vous. No, never. She will never say, I would like to see, like in English, I would like to see you. Je voudrais voir vous. It will never occur to them. It cannot. It is set, <laughs> mentally set, clearly, solidly. It's just all like... Okay. Um, hmm? uh, have I got... Oh, sorry, we have a little bit more. Another 40 seconds. I just up here. I go home and I'm sitting there and these things just popping in my head from the class from the day from when we've been sitting in there all day. It sticks up here. That's, don't have to remember it. It's just there. You might ask somebody, you know, how do you say this in French? One person will say it, and you look at him. You look at him as though to kind of confirm it with him. Mm. But he won't say anything. He but, he would. He wants you to be sure within yourself whether you're saying it right yeah, or not. Yeah, like yesterday. Like yesterday, we had to say something, and one of us says it, and then he goes to like Dominda, Do you think that's right? So he goes. He says the same thing, and we're all agreeing on the same thing, and we're like, yeah. And he asks that. everybody individually, and, and, and then, then we he all agree on the same thing. And then he goes. You're right. And then he just goes, like, <laughs> you have to make us go through all of that talk. commends us for working together and getting it right. <laughs> We saw well, that, that I mean, that's a technique people use, and that is, you know, peer assisted correction and stuff, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Using the classroom. It's good. Very good.
Very good. It's uh, it, it's I don't think that they he ever released how he deconstructs the language uh, so he can most effectively teach it. Uh, uh, you know, they they probably got the formula with Michelle Thomas. You know, but he, he's passed now. But they, you know, and they use it for you know all the other languages that he you know like Mandarin and Korean, which he he wasn't on the the tapes for that. Um, so I think it was after his time. But um, he never released how he deconstructed it and made it so he because he had his own methodology of you know what he thought was essential. And I, I think I go over it in the introduction about you know. I think it's his like third point of what he determines to be the most important. Um, I'd love to. I'd love to actually be able to see his deconstruction of of the language, so we can kind of see mm. how and understand how he builds that up. But you know, I think we've touched on before that he's he's trying to mine for content in the person's own language and then build conference from that and then trying mm. to make it simple you know having laying out these structures these blocks that are then interchangeable you know like he was just saying with the verbs um you know i think it's great and i I would love to get more information on that and and how it's kind of constructed and if if you are from the michelle thomas corporation or organization um we'd love to have one of your representatives on and if you want to talk about the method methodology and how that comes about um, that would be very interesting for both ourselves and our viewers. But Rich, you had something to say? Yeah, I think I think that uh, it's probably not that formulaic. It's probably very personalised. Mm-hmm. I, I would imagine that he does it. There's probably some yeah some some maxims that he follows, like you alluded to with the you know the similarities and and he really likes his mnemonics, doesn't he? Loves like, his mnemonics. Like uh, he said, it's very fair, and he got them to remember frère or whatever to do in French, right? Mm-hmm. Le fer. Um right? And uh, and and that probably comes into it, right? And he comes up with phrases that he knows people are going to know, like "c'est la vie." Everyone knows "c'est la vie" because it's mm-hmm. an f- expression that people say in English, mm-hmm. you know. And probably things like "bon appétit," right? And you can use that to teach them "bon" and "appétit," right? Yeah. And as well as some of the pronunciation, because everyone knows it's "bon appétit." It's not, you know, "bone appetite" or whatever, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, I imagine that there's a lot of that that goes on, and then just an exploration of what sentences you can actually uh, you can actually make from that. The and the easier it is, the better, because you're building up a context from nothing. And the more con- we know, the more context you have, the, the better hope you have of of learning more things. So uh, great to get a base like this within a couple of days that would allow you to then go on and do some other stuff. I don't know if they have courses where it goes from like. Spanish to French, or uh, you know, German to mm. you know Italian. Uh, I only remember mm. the ones from like English to another language, or another language to English. So mm. I'd be I, I, that's why I mentioned that having the structure or kind of how he puts this curriculum or syllabus together, because I'd love to see how that would be applied to other languages mm. between you know like mandarin and arabic you know how how would he de- keep deconstruct those so he would be able to teach mandarin to an uh, an arabic speaker or something you know something like that uh, and i think that goes back to that criticism of it's so personal to him it can't be applicable in a wider educational system so and um, maybe he's done a bit of himself a bit of a disservice by not kind of really teaching how he teaches in a way. Mm. Mm, right, because now, yeah, because they, he could have he could con- contribute to the body of knowledge of pedagogy, modern pedagogy, right? Whereas, yeah, oh, and he has uh, uh, inadvertently, or you know, people have got yeah, all these right. different concepts. <clears throat> That you know you you've yeah. done a great job of bringing up, but it's not him, right? Mm, it's just aspects yeah. of it. Yeah, that is a missed that is a missed opportunity. I wonder if part of that is because he's he was sort of rejected a little bit by the language community, so he sort of thought, well, you know, what's, uh, yeah, what's the I point? think I think that was it, uh, and I think he brings that up in the 
the documentary. Oh, does he? Yeah. Okay. Um, I so remember the next Language quite... Master, look, look it up, watch <clears throat> it all the way through, it's fantastic. Uh -huh. But we'll move on to the next clip. It takes Michelle eight months to dissect the complete structure of a language and find a way to teach it so it is effortless to learn. But his unique analysis is something he has refused to share and he has never written anything down. His legacy, he decided, was to be his tape course. The vast majority of Michelle's students never meet him. They learn their choice of language by listening to his voice through headphones. Again, there's no homework. The tapes do it for them. Exactly. Yeah, uh, that, that, that was it, really. I think, I guess it was just a thing of making that point about him mm -hmm. not writing anything down and, and all the rest of it. I found that a little bit difficult to believe that he never wrote anything down, but maybe that's the kind of thing that you learn to do if you're you know, confined to a Nazi concentration camp for any period of time. Yeah, um, and you don't want you to write down any do of your that. incriminating details or anything like that because yeah. it means that your life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but eight months. So it takes him eight months to to do that. I just, I'd love to find out that process and, you know, mm. what he does. I think that dissect the language might be the wrong way of putting it. I mean, I know they're saying there's legacy is the tape courses and the tape courses, as far as I'm concerned, even the tape courses that are so-called advanced, they don't, they're not really advanced, they're basic. They're taking you to what we might think of as a, for, as a kind of beginning pre-intermediate level, I think is, mm -hmm. is, a, is, a, is a way of saying it in, you know, 16 hours or whatever it is of doing that, mm -hmm. um, which, is, which is pretty good. Uh, I mean, and certainly grammar-wise, you kind of get to that maybe not fully with the vocabulary and, and other skills. Um, but uh, I, I think, yeah, probably when you talk about eight months, what they really mean is it takes him eight months to design that course. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't, I don't know. We'll never know, will we? That's the thing. We can't, yeah. we can't get Michelle Thomas and interview him now and say, well, when you said eight months to dissect the language, what do you mean? Do you mean everything or what? <laughs> yeah. You know, what? What are you talking about there? You know, you've got to think of, because it takes a long time to kind of come up with these mnemonic devices. Uh, you know, mm. I've got, I've got my, a, a whole bunch of my own that I've learned over the years, yep. but, you know, to actively yep. sit down and think of them. Whew. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I've, I've got a few as well, but they tend to occur organically. Yeah. You sort of come across them, you know, they occur to you on the spot and then you start using them in all your future classes. Mm -hmm. I don't really sit down and look for mnemonics. Yeah, yeah, it's maybe true. He, maybe he does. Oh, maybe maybe don't don't really know, and well, and sadly, we'll we'll never know. Uh, okay, so do we have one last clip? Britt Thompson has been granted her wish to watch Michelle and judge the students' progress for herself. Oh, he sat down. He's not behind the chair this time. So, again. I would just say, uh, when, when will you arrive? You have a choice. Car, allez-vous, mm -hmm. arrivez. Right. Or the... Car, arrivez. Right. Good. It is very important for me. C'est très, très important. C'est très important for me. Pour moi. C'est très important pour moi. Because I would like to see you. Parce je voudrais. To see you. Vous. Voir. Right. Je voudrais vous voir. Mm -hmm. I would like to know. Je voudrais. To know. Ça va. Once more. Ça... To know. Ça... Savoir. Je... Right. Je voudrais savoir. If you want. Si vous... Once more. Si vous voulez. Right. So if you want to go see it with me. Allez. The whole thing. If you want. Si vous voulez. Voulez ending. <coughs> vous voulez. E. E Z. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go <coughs> see it with me. Si. Voir. If you want again. Uh, si. Si. 
Voulay. Go. Allee. Allee. Ending, allee. Ja. See it? Le voir. What's what? Le voir. Le voir with me. Avec moi. Tonight. Ce soir. Right? Mm -hmm. At what time are you going to be here? A killer. Are you going? Are you going? Allez-vous. To be? Être. Here. Ici. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, it was very impressive. Very impressive. I think they pro as one of the students themselves say they learned in one week what they learn in five years. Yeah. And interestingly, one of the girls said, after five years in school, my French teacher said, I think you better give up because there's no way you're going to succeed. And Awful. here she said, I've just managed it fine. I feel as if I understand it. So I'm interested to know really about how you found, first of all, how you found the experience and how, you, how much you think you've learned? Now, it's always difficult to answer that question, but... Good. Very good. Better than the teachers. Oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> Why is it better? Why is it very different? Why is it different? Because he explains himself. He, don't, he doesn't make you feel lost. If you're stuck on a word, he'll just take you right back to the beginning. Like if he was a baby saying ABC, he'll just right. take you right back and then you just actually like click and you know what you're saying then. You say it in English first and then we sort of break it down. Then we'll think, well, this is how you translate it back into the language. And then it's easier that way. Whereas just in our normal classes, we're just told to say something and remember that. Yeah. But this is like broken to pieces and each piece we remember and we use each piece for a next sentence yeah. and it's just really easy that way. He doesn't throw things at you, you know, this is that and this is that. He, he's kind of he's kind of like made the structure into such a way that you go by it and once you've got the ingredients like you can cook what you want. But you haven't done any writing at all, have no, you? No, no, you no. haven't seen any French no. written at all. No. So. You're not writing down no notes. If you don't take it in now, you're never going to get it you're right. Never get it. So you have to concentrate. He's just got mm. patience. He got all the time in the world. Mm. You know, you have to really you can like think about it. just sit back, think <laughs> about it. And it's like it's just coming through your mind because your mind is relaxed and you know that he's just said patience. And you're like, okay, I will be patient, okay? I'm going to take my time and I'm going to think about it. And it just comes out. The revelation is that it's the learning process itself that motivates these kids. Oh, master shit. The mastery <laughs> of the structure, the mastery of part of the language is the thing that keeps them going and keeps them enthusiastic and we lose sight of that in the way we teach we try and we think we capture their interest by finding them interesting materials that are supposedly related to their interests outside in the world generally and maybe we miss the point and I think he's probably onto something very important here. Okay, uh, so that was our last clip, and um, we'll talk about the last clip, but also we'll go into our conclusion as well. So, Rich, last clip. Um, well, she was quite an uh, intrusive observer, wasn't she? I don't think I'd be particularly happy if someone came into my class and started mm -hmm. poking their nose right into the students' faces while they were trying to say stuff. <laughs> I, would have, I, would have, I would have asked for her to sit at the back and distance, you know? Does she really need to be sat there? But maybe he encouraged her to sit there almost in the circle, so to speak. Breathing oh. heavy on the ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, <laughs> I, think she, I think she just draw an important conclusion but perhaps not the only conclusion. She seems to think that that's the takeaway, and the takeaway that she's coming she's coming to there is the idea that uh, the motivation for the students is learning the language itself. Um, this is the argument that people use against Pavlovian style motivation, like point systems and you know giving things to the kids to get them to learn, uh, and also the reason why adults who learn English purely for work purposes can have difficulties. It's that whole internal versus external motivated thing, isn't it? And yeah, it is, it is an important thing to be able to say that, you know, actually learning the language and getting better at the language, it is probably the best uh, form of motivation. Mm -hmm. um, 100%. Um, but but I, I wouldn't necessarily say that that's the only takeaway or even the most important. I think there's lots of things to take away 
from that. I, I would just quickly address before you go into the other takeaways that um, uh, I agree. I, I think it's it's a scale. It start. It, it's a scale, and um, from my experience, the scale begins at ex, uh, extrinsic, external motivation and. I feel the aim as a teacher is to move it as much as you can mm. up the parameter to yeah. intrinsic, uh, to yeah. where they just, uh, I, they just love to learn, and yeah. they they. Uh, but it's so hard to get there, and yeah. especially with kids. Um, mm. Well, I was going to say especially with kids, but it's not always the case. If you can be a bit more individualized, but that's a whole yeah. different subject. Well, um, no, but I, I agree with what you're saying. I think that um, if you go too extreme with that ideal, um, mm -hmm. you know, then you miss out on things like gamification, don't you? Because there's no real rationale for it if you're saying, well, the motivator should be just the language. Yeah. Well, playing games can be fun, though. Why not have them in the classroom? It doesn't have to be Ooh. all about the language, does it? But, you know, like, through, um, what, so, through gamification... You know, you might reach a couple of students that just actually just love learning. They just love learning the the language mm. and stuff. So I don't think they're they're separate, and I don't think you should lead with, "Yeah, we all love learning English," <laughs> because not everyone does. Yeah. But you know, you mm. can you can slowly find ways to internalize uh, internalize it, and it could not it could even mm. just be not loving learning English, but loving the sense of confidence that you get oh. for having a mastery over. Because a lot of people mm. have done terribly academically at school, right. then they learn this one thing and they mm. just love it. And it's not because they right. love English, but it's because they feel accomplished academically and no mm. point in their life they've ever felt that way before. Um, yeah, that's true. And that, that probably plays into why these kids in particular, some of them seem to be really into this now. Yeah. Maybe it's because they feel like, you know, it's the first time they've had a teacher who actually cares that much or is just doing that kind of, getting that enthusiasm out of them. Yeah. So um, I guess... Go yeah. ahead. No, I was going to say, uh, oh, the you had things, other yeah. points uh, well, that you well, to bring Well, I, uh, I think we did, we've pretty much, uh, throughout this video, we've talked about them all, haven't we? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, th I think that there is, there's a lot of takeaways there's the idea of relaxation, there's the environment, there's the kids sat in the armchairs, there's the small class size, let's be honest. Yeah. You know, he's got Huge. six, seven, <laughs> he's got six, seven, eight students, he hasn't got 30. Um, so that's a different thing. Um, how do you, how you even address that in the educational system? I do not know whatsoever, but it's a huge stumbling block for, for learning. Um, mm. And it's not, I mean, you know, think of it myself with having like 50 to 60 students in a class, mm. you know, to try and move towards intrinsic motivation outside of gamification, especially with young kids and all these different levels, it, oh, it's, it's absolutely yeah. nuts. So you do the best with what you can, but you know, yeah. I, that might want to be one of my single most uh, important points for learners is if you're looking to learn, try and find a small class where you get mm. more individualized uh, attention from the teacher. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a thing. Uh, I think there's, I think you can you can work with different class sizes as well, um, but with his method in particular, yeah, I think it does need to be smaller, doesn't it? And I, I think he actually his main classes tend to be one to one mm -hmm. when he's teaching celebrities and stuff. So mm -hmm. that's a different ball game as well. Yeah. So there's that. There's the mnemonics. Yeah. Um, there's the his analysis of the language which you were talking about. Um, there's the fact that he's taken away some of the things which might well be hang-ups for some of these kids, like writing things down, gets rid of that. Um, you know, there's no pressing play on the tape for, mm -hmm. to listen to some awful audio of an actor try to do some French and, you know, uh, luckily in English language teaching, we've kind of moved away from that and audios tend to be a bit more authentic, but even then they can still be a bit rusty, can't they? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing about the football match the other day. It was damn well, you know, it's just like nobody speaks like that exactly. It sounds like an actor, you know, yeah. um, they haven't quite got it down yet. 
Um, but at least the focus has gone more towards authenticity. But uh, a lot of these kids probably have, you know, bad anchors, shall we say, with that stuff. They have bad memories and it, tri- it would trigger. And he takes it all away, puts them in armchairs, you know, gives them some plants and just talks to them a bit. Yeah, it's um, almost kind of like uh, a, a washing, uh, a purification shower, <laughs> you know, because it, you, when, he's, when you're getting students into the classroom, you're not getting blank slates. Uh, you're getting a mm. whole bunch of, you know, mm. maybe academic trauma. Maybe they're really good on, you know, they have their own idea of how they should learn. So mm. just going initially and having that reset of going, this is how it's going to be. Uh, this is what we're going to do. Follow along with my method here. Uh, maybe more teachers could, should consider that when they first get there. I know we all we all think about the first class and we all think icebreakers and you know getting mm. everyone to you know like uh, be familiar with each other. But you know maybe we can expand upon that and set yeah. this. This is how I want the class to feel like. Yeah. Well, he he very directly did that, didn't he? The yeah. very first thing he did was, right, let's redecorate this, right? And got mm-hmm. and takes them out to the van out the back, and they took the carpets in. He was they were there doing it with him. Yeah, he got them to do it. Yeah. Like move, right? Get all those tables at the back. Get those chairs over there. Bring in the armchairs. You know, they're very much involved. They created that classroom with him. Yeah, um, that's kind of a almost a psychological thing, isn't it? This well, that's is what you do with rules now. with the little kids, isn't it? You're like, oh, what what should the rules mm. be? And they tell you all that. Right. But, yeah, that's often it. they don't feel it. It's just you know, this is mm. these are the rules that I've always told that you that's should have true. in a classroom. But yeah, that's a different subject. So. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And what else? Um, so there's the there's the, there's the peer correction, there's the autonomous student correction, the fact that he's in, encouraging students to correct themselves rather than feeding their models. Mm-hmm. You know, these kind of techniques back when this was made, I don't think they were particularly, you know, well popularized. No. Uh, I mean, I, I only found out about them kind of as uh, through the years of language teaching and observations and very uh, knowledgeable mentors and studying this and studying that. And it took, you know, now I don't know as well as you, I'm not really sure what they teach on a PGCE, which is the qualification to teach in a school in England. Mm-hmm. Hopefully they are teaching that sort of stuff because mm-hmm. uh, it is, it is kind of, it is kind of important, but she obviously hasn't really picked up on, on that. And I think, you know, there's key techniques, unless you just kind of think, yes, of course everyone does that. But I don't remember any of my school teachers doing that sort of thing. Or if they did, it kind of felt like it was by accident rather than, rather than something that was considered in the way he does it. Yeah. Um, and like he said, uh, this idea that he knows what they're thinking and he kind of has a f- complete idea of where their knowledge is. And he has that patience of taking them back to the start if they really don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, no, 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 remember, fair, le fair, or whatever, right? And, yeah. You know, taking them all the way back and walking them through it, um, which also I think is quite important. Yeah, it's like he's got these... Um specific save points to use a gaming term of like with verbs it's mm. like oh this is this is the verb and this verb is the save point so we can always refer back yep. to that when we're going into exchanging these little language blocks that he he yep. creates um, yeah yeah it's very it's just it's really really clever and um i know you know a lot of people diss the method um and say oh there's too much speaking of english and um, mm. there's not enough, you know, just practicing the rote learning of the language and stuff like that. And they, they kind of, I feel like mm. they're missing the point. This is not, mm. this is to get a person comfortable and dare I say conversational with learning a language in a, in a fast, uh, period mm. of time. And then, you know, after they yeah. get past beginners and they're starting to hit pre-intermediate, it's almost kind yeah. of like you don't really need a teacher so much. You just kind of need to get out there and be using the language. And, you know, if mm. you've got some principles that you can kind of like, oh, I, I've i learned a new verb today, and <clears throat> he's already given you a structure on how to use pronouns with that verb, yeah. how to kind of conjugate it, and how to kind of use it within other functional language structures, then it's just, you're just integrating, you're just feeding the, the language uh, monster that you've created. <laughs> but yeah you know yeah I, I, no you're right it's given it's given people that insight into how 
Mm -hmm. They're actually really going to learn that language so they can begin to understand it themselves. Anyway. That's right, because before this experience, they probably just thought of French as being a random collection of phrases, nouns, and verbs that they learned without yeah. even really knowing what a noun or a verb is. Mm -hmm. And now they, they get it. They have this idea of it being like Lego. And they can put things together to make other things. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a fantastic approach. And um, like I said, I think it's a great, introduction I, I mean it's up there for me with something like the Callan method that again has that we, we should look at that see if we can find some clips of that where it kind of takes the pressure off the the student because they don't have to remember anything mm -hmm. it's fed to them I think maybe the yeah. Michelle Thomas is the upgraded version of that but mm -hmm. a lot of people just need with language learning they need the first part where they kind of get to a certain level where they feel comfortable that they can kind of communicate with that language and then there's the the levels after that where it's you're you can actually use it in a way that um you know is it is fluent and then after that there's levels of mastery but that there's a big hump at the beginning from going from zero to having a grasp and uh, one of my qualms with uh, language teaching is that is often not the focus there's often very little focus on how do we get this person from zero to a good grasp in a short period of time in a way that's you know easy and you know kind of moves away from um, you know bad experiences that they might have had or something because you know a lot of the time it's it's with the language teaching there's so much focus on especially like when I was in uh, Canada you get these students that always already come to you with a certain level of English and you don't know how that's been taught there and you kind of you kind of having to teach it as a beginner level but they're not really beginners so how can you do that in a native country or give tools to native uh, teachers to be able to kind of get them over that, that initial hump and how can uh, us as language teachers help that along rather than doing kind of often what feels like remedial work in a way un until they mm. and then we can start to build like to intermediate and advanced level you, you kind of follow my train of thought hopefully yeah yeah I mean that's basically what he's doing isn't it yeah uh, because you know they they, they you know, you can take someone with scatty bits of this, that, or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, certainly from your own experience, right? Because you, you went in with that, with, with the Spanish, yeah. that you had kind of bits and bobs from sort of beginner level that we, you'd mm -hmm. learned in other courses. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you went through his stuff and found it kind of really sunk in a lot better. And, mm -hmm. you know, you can, suddenly you're learning these ways of constructing things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a fair bit of a replay value in that as well. I remember listening to, to his course kind of a couple of times and, and, fi and still finding it useful practice because you go, and this is one thing we haven't talked about yet, actually. It's that idea that um, the other students go through the process in their head, mm -hmm. even uh, though he's targeting one student. The other people do it in their head as well. Yeah, That's you saw that in their last clip. Um, She's like... <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 that's it. And uh, that's another feature of demand high. So mm -hmm. demand, the, the Jim Scrivener thing, right? This, that, that, this is the rationale for it because you're doing it in a classroom. With, you're going through it with one student, really, mm -hmm. but the other students do go through it as well. Mm -hmm. They just don't, don't necessarily respond, but they, they're doing it in their head mm -hmm. if yeah. they're paying attention and they're interested. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so there we are. That was Michelle Thomas, uh, a language master, our considered teaching masters. Uh, we'll have more of these series. If you have any suggestions of teaching masters or you consider to be teaching masters, they don't have to be based around language. We've got a whole bunch of ideas of teachers um, that aren't necessarily English language teachers that we want to look at because we, we've taken either something personally from their methodology and their style and use it in our class or we just admire them um, and you know we think there's something that we can learn from that and I know you've got a whole bunch of ideas as well and I really hope you enjoyed this video because you know I really enjoyed doing it I really enjoyed constructing it and it helped me uh, professionally because you're having to kind of think about 
what they, the you know, Michelle Thomas did and how he, how I've applied some of his stuff, how I've learned from him as a teacher, not to teach, but as a learner to actually learn the language. So mm -hmm. it was a very interesting video uh, to cover, and I hope that's conveyed through the screen. Uh, Rich, you got any final comments? I don't know anything to that. Seems pretty good to me. Um, <laughs> if there are any clever points out there who are getting messages from Michelle Thomas and would like to come on to represent him beyond the grave for an interview, then uh, yeah, obviously, ass assuming, there, uh, assuming that clairvoyance actually... If there are any... Is right? cl no, yeah, clairvoyance. <laughs> mid, 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 mediums. 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 Yeah, mediums. mediums. Um, I have it on good authority that there is such a thing as a Edwards, medium who actually Edwards. can... Do it. Get on here. <laughs> That's his um, name. I can't remember his first. Jonathan Edwards. He's the medium. Yep. Well, yeah, but we'll probably not. Let's not go down that road. <laughs> yeah, but they, I, they must be. They're still making the tapes. Actually. I wonder if they're actually doing uh, classes as well. That would be interesting. I bet they'd be super expensive though, because that person would need to be highly trained. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, I, th I think I, I remember hearing that, you know, he was charging like a couple of thousand dollars a, a, an hour uh, for his one-to-one -one classes. And that was, you know, however many decades ago that was. So Yeah, if you go um, onto the, their website, they've got a whole list of uh, celebrities, uh, uh, esteemed mm -hmm. politicians and intellectuals, just, you know, rows yeah. after rows of names. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I've been Neil Teacher of Team Teacher, and uh, if you want to find some of my stuff, go to my website, uh, teamteacherchina.com, uh, where we have a whole bunch of PPT uh, lessons and games that you can use in your classroom, especially large public school classrooms. Uh, we have a YouTube channel, Team Teacher China, where we have videos that explain how to use them, along with other teaching uh, aspects and life in China and such. We've got Team Teacher Baby, where I'm applying all these things that I'm talking about in these videos uh, to my child uh, in, in order to create some sort of uh, super mind. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Team Teacher English, uh, where basically those PPTs that I mentioned, we've put them into videos where you can do these homeschool lessons, much like Michelle Thomas, that are uh, uh, away from, you know, uh, a teacher. They can just watch them or even be given for homework just to kind of refresh what they've done in the class. If you're a teacher out there, Rich. So I have um, Professor Rich, youtube.com slash Professor Rich, um, <clears throat> teaching videos <clears throat> and just general nonsense. <clears throat> Uh, something to gain for everybody. My throat just went just now. <laughs> you just, you just <clears throat> gone full Excuse blind me. blessing. Just in the middle of the <laughs> of the plug, um, start coughing like a madman. And I also have Prof Rich Gaming. That's wow, right, everybody. Wow, Prof Rich here, Gaming, where you get to see master level gaming. Basically, in the way that I teach people English, I'm going to show people how to play games to a level far beyond what pro gamers who practice nine hours a day would do. Uh, and obviously, you know, that's just because of my innate skill, ability. Uh, <laughs> Applying no, really. what you've just, learned it's here. It's basically just me messing around with video games. It's going to be first looks, reviews, and it's got absolutely nothing to do with language teaching. It's just a bit of fun. Yeah. And in the future, <laughs> we may have uh, something related to... Uh, baby entertainment, that's something I'm working on uh, related to videos for my own son, which I mentioned on my channel. Um, still having to think about that, whether I'm going to um, make that a public thing or not. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, fantastic. Very, um, very excited for the, what the content Rich is going to be producing. Um, like I said, I want to reiterate any ideas for teaching masters, uh, teachers out there that have got their own idols, um, then you know, leave some comments below. We are going to be doing some more deep dives, uh, not just on just teaching masters, but also on methodology, techniques, mm. all that sort of stuff. It, it's coming up. It's been filmed. It's it's out there, and it's just it's it's brewing like a a majestic cup of teaching tea. Uh, it's out there and you know, we're very excited to share it uh, along with keeping doing these uh, react videos we've got interviews um, and a whole bunch more so mm -hmm. you know keep 
remember to subscribe, like, yep. and share. And that's all for today. And make sure you check out our most popular series, Mind Your Language, React. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Back to the seventy. <laughs>